What's up guys and welcome back. Today we're finally gonna install this DNA air filter. I've been kind of holding it off for a while. I was a little afraid of overheating the engine by having both the exhaust and the intake. I gotta line up on getting her tuned. So we're gonna get her installed right now. We'll do a quick little step-by-step -step how to, make it as quick as I possibly can for you guys. Before we get started, here's the tools we're gonna use for today. The first thing to get after is to get our seat off because we have to take off quite a few of these fairings to get that gas tank up in the air so that we can get in and under that air filter. These two under here are five millimeter hex to remove the seat. And our seat will just come right off. So we have three push pins in here we need to get out. And something I keep forgetting to tell you guys about is these do break. Getting replacement pieces is not that hard. I've actually found them on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description for you guys, but I got this little kit. Kind of like has way more than we need and kind of comes with this little cheesy, you know, remover tool. The packet that we do need is these, and these will replace pretty much every one of the push pin fasteners we have so far for the bike. So I'll link that down in the description. If you've broken them, luckily for me, I haven't broken them on video yet. <laughs> I keep breaking them like when I'm just working on stuff on my own and then I forget to tell you guys about it. I'll put that link down below, like I said. So we got this four millimeter here. And with all that done, we can slide this forward, lift up and remove it. So that's fairing number one that needs to come off on the right hand side. For the next fairing piece we got, two more of these hex bolts right here. We'll get this guy out. This one right here with the fuel tank. And then this push pin under here. Five millimeter hex. One more of these. And we should be able to just pry this guy out. And the only thing holding it at this point is these rubber grommets down here, this rubber grommet here, and then there's one more right here. So those three rubber grommets, and we just need to repeat the same steps on the other side. One, two. The next thing to do is right under the fuel tank there, we have two more hex keys and they are a five millimeter as well. These two silver ones. There's one. There's the other one. Same thing on this side. Two more five, five millimeter hexes. And then back on this side, there's a 12 millimeter bolt up here that we need to loosen. You can take it all the way out, but I don't think we need to. I think we can be able to just lift the tank without completely removing it. So we'll get it most of the way out there. It'll be loose and should allow the tank at this point to lift up like that. Now we can only go up so far and that's because there's an electrical connector under here. And what I see is the electrical piece is what's really making it difficult to lift up any higher. So what I think I'm going to do is lift up. And if you can see under there, this electrical connector here for the fuel pump, I'm just gonna remove that. And that gave me a lot more room. So I'm up there pretty good. I should be able to get at it now. Now we just need to shove something under here. And that should do the trick right there. That should be more than enough. So here's the stock air box. Interesting. You can actually take this rubber boot off. That's kind of weird. And you can see that they have made some modifications since I started looking up on the MT-07 versions because this went all the way down to the bottom and it doesn't anymore, which I think is kind of cool, at least from what I was looking at on some of the older MT-07s. Because I was kind of confused when this DNA did not come with a different cap like this cap right here is got a very narrow hole some of the other ones i keep the other ones i've been seeing they come with another replacement cap and this hole is considerably larger to allow more airflow which i would assume would be better but 
in this instance it doesn't but i will say it doesn't have like the uh, i'll see if i can find an image online and show you guys now what i'm talking about but basically it went all the way down to the bottom of the air filter and i would assume that would restrict air quite a bit and that was a heavy mod people were doing to get more airflow inside of their mt 07s so obviously we don't have to do that on this bike which is really cool i don't think removing this entirely is worth it but i'll talk to the guy who's going to do the tuning and see if he thinks that is something we should do but for now i'll definitely put it back on so it's pretty easy if you got a decent little stubby screwdriver to get this thing in here. Okay, there's that. That's out of the way. One more Phillips screw inside this hole here. We should be able to take it out at that point. Sorry with the limited light here, but you can see we had one more screw inside this hole holding it actually in there. And here's our replacement filter, which doesn't have a screw and fits nicely right on in there. That's good and snug. Make sure you work the corners around. You can feel it kind of like popping into place. Definitely don't want it sitting up at all so that air doesn't get by the filter. But yeah, it did feel like I had to wiggle it around to get it to drop in there. So make sure you're, you do that. There we go. Massive horsepower gains, here we come. Maybe, maybe not, probably not. There's one. We'll get these all started by hand before we start doing any zipping. Our bolts are back on. Go ahead and make sure we get this guy back in there. It, it, I would recommend you don't pull this out because it's going to take me a while to get all this to go back inside and it'll probably just be annoying as hell to do. So unless you're truly planning on removing it, I don't think I would remove it. I would assume like the whole point is for it to funnel air from your ball sack instead of the hot engine, but I don't know. Sometimes these things are actually on intakes for a reason. And I say like, for sure, like my Dodge Ram, it's turbo is so quiet and there's this really annoying plastic chunk inside there. And if you pull it out, the turbo sounds cool. Like. But from my understanding, with some research that I watched online, it actually reduces the power of the truck. Not by a ton, but it does a little bit to take it out. It removes, you lose power. So sometimes these little weird things are totally worth it. They're engineered for a reason to do what they do. Unless some professional tells me otherwise, I'm leaving her in there. So I would recommend not taking it off because you are four screws and swap out your filter like so. And that's it. Now we just got to put it back together. Don't forget, we did remove this wire for the fuel pump. So we need to plug that back in like so. Set her on down and reverse order, put her back together. So I'll try and speed through this for you guys so you guys don't have to watch it step by step, but I'll at least show you the basics in case you forgot. Let's spin these two guys back in here. And I would definitely put these back in before we tighten the front of the fuel tank just to allow for a little bit of extra play just in case. They were a little annoying to get in. You can see that it's kind of moved slightly and you could move this tank and line it up. Probably a lot better with that being loose than if you had tightened that down first. All right. This guy will probably be the most annoying one for you to get in there because you do have to weasel this in behind here while you still pop it in. It's not the hardest thing in the world, but it's definitely annoying. And you can see this has got a line up there, but really once you start getting those little rubber rivets to go, then it'll start kind of falling in place like that. So that's back in there the way it's supposed to go. We've got one up in here to the fuel tank. We've got this one here in the front. Don't forget to pop these pins out. One goes in under here. We've got this pop pin here. And we're back to this guy, which is a five millimeter. We got this one, slides under. And once it's seated correctly, it'll slide back in very nicely. And if you remember that video where we swapped out all the silver bolts for the black bolts, I'll link that here if you guys want to check it out, just to get rid of, like this was a silver bolt. So I'll link that if you guys want to check it out. Got the one up here by the fuel tank, two up here by the headlight. Get the other side rocking, all right. Back to this side again. Remember, this guy's got to go under. It kind of makes it easier if you line this one up first as you rotate it in and bring those down. This is an annoying one to get in. There we go. Not too bad that time. Start with our plastic pin over here. 
We got a plastic push pin up top. We have this five mil. And because we swapped out all the bolts, we're putting the silver up here. And for some odd reason, when this one came stock with a black bolt, why Yamaha didn't put black bolts on every freaking spot, I don't know. That guy there by the tank. These are the newer ones I had recently got off of Amazon where they're just like, I mean, they look, they look okay. They look a little different, but they work. They go in there. You just pull them all the way out, stick them in the hole. And then once they're in there nicely, you can just pop them in. Decent cheap replacement for those things failing. Or if you break a few, we get our seat back on here, our two five mil hex. All right, that wraps it up. Thanks again for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.